our goal was to reframe our strategic goal so that in the end, we would be able to set clear action steps and align those action steps more importantly to the measures so that we could move forward. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's Accelerate Your Performance podcast. I'm your host, Janet Pilcher. Thanks for having a desire to be your best at work and help your organization achieve success. This podcast is all about actions we can take to improve workplace culture and achieve results, and they're all aligned to our nine principles for organizational excellence. On today's episode, we have a leader who has been recognized for her dedication, passion, and commitment to students, Dr. Sue Savaglio Jarvis, Superintendent of Kenosha Unified School District. She's a collaborative educator who strives to achieve excellence and high academic standards so that all students at all levels are prepared for being successful in the 21st century. She began her career in early education shortly after graduation from Arizona State University with a Bachelor of Arts in Education. She's a lifelong learner who went on to receive her master's in secondary education and a doctorate of educational administration from Arizona State. After moving to Kenosha, Wisconsin in 2005, her hometown, Sue became the assistant principal of Tremper High School, where she focused on teaching and learning, student assessment, coordination of instruction, curriculum materials, and staff development. In 2012, she was appointed to assistant superintendent of teaching and learning, and in July 2014, she was selected by the Board of Education to serve as superintendent of Kenosha Unified School District, the third largest in the state of Wisconsin. Her district led the way for the big five districts in Wisconsin by getting students back in school during the pandemic. We are so proud of her leadership and thrilled to have her share a little bit about her and about her district and how they've accomplished their ambitious goals. And Sue has set some ambitious goals for her district and worked with their teams and so happy to have Sue with us today. Welcome, Sue. I'm so glad to have you on our show today. Thank you, Janet. I'm very, very excited to be here and honored to be present and sharing with you today. Thank you. Sounds great. Let's um, let's start off. If you would tell us a little bit uh, about your district, a little bit about your area and your district and where you work. Great. Thank you. Kenosha is actually located on the shores of Lake Michigan, and we are nestled between Milwaukee and Chicago. Kenosha has a very long history of valuing the importance of public education. And we have three surrounding entities that make up Kenosha Unified District. We have approximately 20,000 students in pre-K through 12. We have 22 elementary schools, five middle schools, three high schools, six charter schools, and three choice schools. Lastly, but I say definitely not least, we have approximately 3,500 staff who really give it their all to ensure that we are providing each student with excellent, challenging, and learning opportunities and experiences that prepare each student for success. That's great. And Sue, you're one of the larger districts in Wisconsin, right? That's correct. What they call in Wisconsin, there's the top five urban school districts and Kenosha Unified School District is the third largest in the state. Yeah. So that's a big responsibility on you. You know, I mean, that's, it has to be, you have to feel that responsibility. It is, it is. And we work very well together with all of the other colleagues across the state, but in particular with my other four colleagues. So it is nice to have some sense of um, collegiality as we work through uh, what we've been through the pandemic. Yeah. Absolutely. So speaking of that, we've been through the pandemic over the last year. You know, it's so hard to believe uh, for us, it was March 13th, you know, when we didn't go back (laughs) back to the office. So, I mean, it's truly been about a year. So why was it important to you to, to refresh your district goals as you were going through the pandemic? And what were you trying to accomplish with those? Thank you, Janet. Yes. First, I realized that we were not moving the needle on our strategic goals, which included five goals, our strategic plan. Each year, we would bring forth our mission, vision, core values, and strategic goals to our board and our community. Very, very important component that uh, we are aligned with our school board and our community. I realized that when our senior leadership team, we start to discuss their specific goal areas in order to catch each other up for speed, we were not poised um, nor in position that really demonstrated progress. And that was concerning to me. Uh, There were stalls and I recognized and we recognized as a senior leadership team that we truly did not have defined action steps, nor were we able to measure our progress. And those two conditions hindered us really from improving. And as the leader, I recognized our struggle had to provide context to our next steps. A goal setting with measurable action steps in any strategic plan is really vital to the success of the organization. So I then reached out to um, student education, immediately began our partnership. The collaborative effort really resulted in discussing regarding rebuilding, 
Do you abandon your goals? Do you refresh your goal? Yeah. The senior leadership team then decided they didn't want to abandon our current goals. And therefore we decided with great guidance for um, our student mentor, Dr. Manarazzo, that we would like to refresh our goals and really give them a lift, if you will. Our goal was to reframe our strategic goal so that in the end, we would be able to set clear action steps and align those action steps more importantly to the measures so that we could move forward. Uh, we were trying to frame up a live process where we could proudly share this as our strategic plan and our steps to get us there. Uh, more importantly, I really believe it's the measures that will help guide our work in that whole journey of excellence and then continuous improvement. First of all, congratulations in kind of stepping back and doing that, Sue, because I think sometimes we have a tendency to just keep going, keep moving forward without kind of refocusing our attention. And, you know, just congratulations on doing that and being the leader who built that reflective thought in your process to, to do it. I'm to pay great dividends for you, I'm sure. When you were going through the pandemic and you were setting those goals, did you find yourself having to kind of re set, reset your goals related to what you knew was going to be ahead of you? Or, you know, were you also thinking long term? I'm just curious in how that conversation went. I found ourselves really leaning toward resetting and refreshing those goals. When you look at kind of the thought process, we're getting trust, and which is huge in leadership. Just a little background. I was with this team as assistant superintendent before becoming superintendent. <sighs> So I knew them well as working colleagues. And when I entered into this role, I really solidified that we're in this together. We are one team working towards success for our students, our staff, and namely the success of the district and our community. Um, with that, that trust, if you will, uh, we have to be able to let go and let the team guide the work. Um, and so I had to let go. I had to let go of some of this work to identify. I trust them. I know them. I know that their work is good. They're a valuable asset to um, the organization, the district, they're experts. And I felt that you have to let the experts to do their work. I had to believe in them along the way, valuing the work and, and sort of stay out of it. I think sometimes as a leader, you have to let go. You have to hit let go and let it live where it needs to live because at the end of the day, they're the owners of this work. And in order to see that ownership carry through, I wanted them to have from the beginning, a step in the process, a big step in the process. I never doubted their work either. They are committed to the district. They're much focused in a hard working, compassionate team. And, and they truly want success for all of our students and staff and community. And having that pride, um, Kenosha just has a pride in public education and want excellence that I felt letting the group move forward with the guidance and to refresh the goals because they believed in our other goals. They were written, they're written well, but they felt that they needed some refreshing. And so yeah. we, they didn't want to throw them out, but we refreshed them. Yeah, I bet the conversations were productive and good and, and probably really re-engaged them or engaged them in that process, you know, so they became kind of owners with you um, as you begin to execute. Yeah, one of the things we did was we also took them out to our community. I think that's very, very mm. vital. So our staff and our community also had um, input over them. So when we started tweaking them or refreshing them it, internally, then we sent them out and we had uh, staff and community also provide input. And we have a large Spanish population as well. So we hosted these events in Spanish so that we can gain as much information. And through that process, there was some tweaking of words in order to help us. The biggest piece was to help us then, what are those measures we're going to use to then to show that improvement process? Building action steps definitely comes in the middle there, of course. Right. It's easy, but how do you align yourself so that you can actually measure what you say you're going to do and show those improvements? So that was very powerful as too. That is powerful. And pretty, I'm assuming, Sue, it's, those measures are, are relatively clear to, to all the individuals who work in, in your district, right? Based on that probably cascading of communication or just, not, it's like that habit of practice. They're just natural things that we're striving for. Absolutely, because we didn't have them. And I think, so that's what's very excited about them. When you don't have something to guide you as a district to move forward, you have what we call a leadership team of 176 individuals in administrative super supervising technical support positions. If you don't have those measures, it is very difficult. There's no course. There's no course of where we're going. And I think that's what we recognize we really needed to improve on in our practice. Yeah, that's great. So um, just a little bit more, you know, how did you adjust the goal setting process? And, and then, you know, a little bit about what did you learn from it? 
Yes. Um, there was a point in time during the pandemic, we had to pull back on the work. I adjusted by knowing the extended day, work long hours of everybody and, and nights, truly and nights. It was a 24-7 operation. As you had shared earlier, Janet, on March 13th, if we all recall, we all shut down and had to transition rather quickly. Everybody in our team was doing everything they could to keep up with our parental choice learning platforms. We have an in-person and a virtual learning option for our families, which we started in September of 2020. Um, however, over the course of the time, I noticed the stress, long hours, tired faces as positive student and staff cases began to spike up. That just led me to pull back. There was a moment in there that it was like, it's evident that some of our internal work needed to take just a pause. However, I have to say the pause was not for too long. I knew that we had organizational commitment to refreshing our goals. I knew the pandemic would slow down based on all the reading and research I was reading. I knew our community has a strong commitment to public education excellence that at some point we need to start back up. So again, it was around November of 2020, we started to start back up with that goal setting I explained a little bit earlier with staff and our community feedback. And I really learned that if we were going to excel and meet the expectations of our community we serve, we, we just need to jump back in and start our strategic plan and keep it moving forward. I also understood while the stress of the pandemic, it caused many to be anxious. I understood that we just, no matter what, no, just no matter what, we needed to really improve to, to be in a better standing for next year. I knew we'd be facing recovery and I just did not want us to fall behind in all the meaningful work that was important to me well after this pandemic. And I just, I know our students and our families and our community count on us every day to yeah. be our very, very best in education. Yeah. You know, that's the one thing as I've talked to Melissa about your district, you know, really in, in your leadership, Sue, and, it, and it's, again, just your ability to keep pressing forward. You didn't use that as an excuse, right? Just keep pressing forward. Just keep pressing forward. Understand that people have particular needs and we have to balance those needs. But, you know, just just your leadership and pressing forward is extremely important. Be proud of you and your executive team for the work that you've done there. And, you know, we at some point, I'd, I'd love to come back and talk to you a little bit more. When, when we're at our conference, we were talking about, you know, school districts that not only face kind of the crisis of the pandemic, but other crisis. For example, Ryan was talking in Estacada, you know, they had the fires and then they had the ice storm. You know, obviously people know from your community, I mean, your community suffered tremendously, you know, over the past year from some of the community mishaps that occurred. And I know that had to affect you all through this whole process. You know, I mean, you had that multiplier effect. Save right. We we did, Janet. We had that multiplier effect, and I think through all that, you know, some I'm just a person that has great beliefs and great hopes, and that we will get through anything. You know, we have a good community, and I think the biggest piece is how collaborative you can be in that community, and then also going back and recognizing. I, I believe, like I've shared, you have to recognize when those stressors are on your community, and how much you can push a little bit, and when you have to pull back in order to help people ad adjust, but. Healing is a huge part of it. And I think that ties into what we said within our community. How do we heal? How do we recover? And also not only within our community and our instance, but also within our framework of our, our educational system and the pandemic. Yes. How do we how do we recover? What is, what is it going to take to help heal the, the staff, the students, the families so that we can look forward to what's hopefully going to become really renewed um, yes. and refreshed. I like that word. I love that word, refreshed. Yes. Uh, refreshed in August and September when we come back to to hopefully an all in-person learning uh, platform for our students. Yeah. And I think we're going to be there. You know, as you know, Sue, I live in Pensacola, Florida. And this last weekend, we had that kind of mid 70s weather, complete sun, you know, able to walk outside and people were out and they were laughing. And I'm like, oh, this feels so good. And I we should take advantage of our probably our end of year next year, you know, last six months, because I think people are going to be happier, you know, happier than than normal, because they're going to be so glad to be, we're going to be so glad to be with each other. So I just appreciate you appreciate the work that your team team has done and just so glad to, you know, to be a partner in that process with you. So thank you for being with us today. Well, thank you, Janet. And I can't uh, tell enough people about the process and working with Studer and the fabulous learning. And I think as leaders, um, no matter how old or how young or where you are, your profession or your career, just being able to network uh, with other folks in similar situations or not even in similar situations. I always talk about having thought partners in leadership and learning in those networking channels. It's truly amazing. And I think this just opened doors for continuous strength in our organizations and continuous and, and have that focus on our student achievement 
and at high levels. And I think that's what we're all about, what we want for our great uh, public education system. So I thank you and I thank you to your organization for helping yeah. to do that. Absolutely. And that's the that's the beauty of us, you know, being able to connect people to people and leaders to leaders. Your work is important and your leadership's important. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. You're welcome, Janet. Here's what we can learn from Sue. She is highly focused on being a great leader of a team. And rather than have an attitude of surviving while managing change, she saw opportunities to achieve beyond historical expectations. She saw it as a challenge and she has succeeded with her team to meet those challenges. As I engage and listen to Sue, she is a leader that believes in stronger teams to build strength in people as they continuously manage and lead change. Thank you for tuning in to Accelerate Your Performance. Please share the podcast, rate us on iTunes if you'd like, and find us on Instagram. If you're looking for more resources related to today's episode, head over to studereducation.com slash podcast. I look forward to connecting with you next time as we continue to focus on the nine principles for organizational excellence so that we can be our best at work. Have a great week.